Hello, my name is Marcus and today we're going to be creating this. So let's get started. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to select the mask tool here. I'm going to go down here into the viewport and select title and action safe so I can see what the middle is. I'm just going to hold control out and shift down so that it creates this uh, perfectly symmetrical square here. There we go. And I'm just going to hide the title safe again. I'm going to go down here into the actual shape. I'm just going to delete this fill here so we only have the stroke. And I'm going to increase the size of the stroke quite a smidge, something like this. And now let's pre-comp this bad boy here, Control shift c and let's call it Shape. There we go. Now you can immediately pre-comp this thing again, Control shift c and call it Shape Tunnel. There we go. Because we're going to use this as a base layer in our entire tunnel. Now let's create the control layer that is going to control the depth of our tunnel. So go up here into Layer, New, and Null Object. We can call this bad boy Control. There we go. We're going to apply some effects to this bad boy. So go into effects and write slider. And we're going to call this bad boy depth. We're going to duplicate it and call this one rotation Z. Because that way we can control these two parameters from this main comp. So let's double click on the shape tunnel pre comp here. And first of all, let's make this layer 3D because we want to be able to offset it in 3D space. And now let's click position to bring up the position of this layer. And let's start writing a sexy expression. So Alt click on position here. So let's start by writing var as in a variable and call it depth equals. And now we're going to link to the sliders of our primary composition. So let's write comp for composition. So it brings up the parentheses and write quotation marks. And you can you should already be able to see the name of your comp down here. So just select that tunnel. After that, you write dot layer because we also want to refer to a layer. And once again, the quotation marks. And then we choose the control layer here. There we go. And dot effect because we want to link to the slider effect. Once again, quotation marks and we choose depth. And at the very end here, we write another parentheses and one because we want it to select the first uh, parameter in the slider controller. So right down here, we're going to write value. So it retains the original value of this layer, which is this value here. Plus, now we start square brackets because this is a three dimensional position, which means it's an array. So we're going to write zero comma zero comma and then depth what we wrote here before. Uh, let's just write it instead. There we go. And the reason we're, we don't want to add any value to the X or the Y, we just want to add it to the C position right now. So now this already works, but we want these layers to be offset in C space based on their index layer. So we're going to add that to this expression. So up here in the depth variable, we're going to add asterisk for multiplication. And I'm going to start a parentheses there. We're going to write index so that it looks at this layer's index and then minus one. The reason we write minus one is because we wanted to start at zero and not at one. There we go. So see already now, if we duplicate this, just to quickly show you what I'm doing here. So if we go back to our main composition here, shape tunnel and go over to our control layer and increase depth, you can see it is now generating a tunnel based on the depth that we're giving it. Let's go back here. Let's delete every layer except for the first one there. There we go. Now we also want to add an expression to the rotation. So press P and shift R as well so that we can bring up the rotation. And you can basically copy the expression that we made on position over to C rotation paste. And we're just going to change a few things here. So instead of depth, we wanted to look at, you guessed it, rotation C. We're going to change the name of this variable to be rot Z. And down here, you can also change this to rot Z. We're going to delete these square brackets, all the stuff. So it's only rot C because this only has one value. There we go. So see, now we can also offset this in our main composition, which is awesome. 
We can already now actually animate the shape. So let's double click on the shape layer we have here. Let's go over into the shape itself, go down into contents and rectangle. And now let's add with this little arrow here. Let's look at trim paths, something like this. So maybe three seconds in, we want it to be completely drawn. And at the beginning, we want it to be not drawn at all. So it just animates on like this. It's quite nice. I'm going to select the last keyframe, Control Shift K to bring up the keyframe velocity. I'm going to set it to zero and a hundred influence so that it starts fast and ends slowly. There we go. So now we have the base set up here. So we can basically enter the tunnel here and just start duplicating these layers quite a bit. I'm going to duplicate this until I have 60 layers. And we can even animate the rotation. So I'm going to go here to the beginning. I'm going to set it to one in rotation Z. And at the very end, let's say six seconds, we want it to be rotation five or six. So see already now we can actually get some really cool patterns looking in there. To make it uh, to make it 3D, we obviously make it 3D first. But if we collapse transforms, it retains all of its properties. So if you press C to bring up the camera options, you can actually orbit around it in full 3D space because it's basically just one big 3D object collapsed. There we go. So let's now create a camera. So layer new camera. You can call this whatever it wants. And I'm also going to create a new layer null object. I'm going to call this cam control. There we go. I'm going to link this camera to this controller because it's easier to animate the controller than it is to animate just the camera. I'm going to make it 3D. So I'm going to press position here. I'm just going to bring us quite close into this tunnel here. Something like this. I'm going to keyframe this at the very beginning. So position and at six seconds, I'm going to go all the way through the tunnel. See already now it's quite mesmerizing just all the way to the end, something like this. So now we have the basis for the tunnel here. So let's start by making it a little bit more juicy. So go over here into effects and apply a glow. Double click on that bad boy. I'm going to hide the GUI because this is very distracting all this line. So control shift H so we can only see the viewport. Let's start playing around with this bad boy. So let's increase the radius a bit. So we get a little bit of that nice glow here. You can even decrease the threshold here. And let's duplicate this bad boy and let's just exaggerate it. Make this nice broad bloom. That makes it quite sexy. I'm going to duplicate this again. And this time I'm going to set it to A and B colors and set these both of these colors to white take the radius all the way down so we get this nice uh, white glow in the middle so let's just control this until we reach something sexy like this there we go so see now we also want to add some nice flicker and dynamicness to this thing so i'm going to add an exposure effect exposure double click on that bad boy i'm going to set it first before everything else because i want this to blink a bit so i'm going to alt click on exposure and i'm going to wait make a wiggle expression so wiggle and then 16 and comma 0 0.3. So every every second it's gonna change value 16 times between 0 and 0 0.3. So it's gonna have these nice blinking effects. Now let's add some particles. So layer new solid. Call this particles with a C not a B. There we go. I'm gonna place it right on top of the shape tunnel here, and we're gonna apply particle world. This is going to add a lot more depth to our scene. So let's go over here. Let's go over here to the beginning. You can see it's all over the place. And let's just hide all this extra stuff. So motion path, grid, floor, all that stuff doesn't really matter. So longevity already. Now we can set these particles to last five seconds. We can set the breath rate down to one. We can set the producer to be quite large. We want this to basically fill the entire depth of the tunnel. So you just increase this right now. It's really hard to see the particles. So let's make them into faded spheres and let's change the color a bit. Let's make them a light blue and a dark blue, something like this. Maybe even uh, increase the birth size and set the death size to zero, something like this. We can even set them to screen so that they blend better with everything in the scene. You can even give them a motion blur. Now let's create the text. So let's go up here into the text tool and write cheese. There we go. And we want this layer to be 3D. Bring up the position and we can see the position from the camera control 
where the camera ends is where we want the text to start. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that position. So because our text is completely black, we can't see it. So let's apply a Vegas effect. Double click on that bad boy. And let's set it down to one. Let's make this completely red, the color of the Vegas here. And instead of using the intensity to create the lines, we wanted to use the alpha. So see, now it starts to appear. And we can even bring up the title action safe again so that we can see what we're doing. And we want this text to first appear when we land. So I'm just gonna shorten the layer until it's right here at the end. There we go. Right now, the Vegas is going to the left. I don't want that. I want it to go towards the right. So I'm gonna go down here into start opacity, set it to zero and end opacity set it to one and i'm actually gonna increase the start opacity a little bit more so we can see it maybe increase the size of the stroke and let's go over to rotation here alt click on it and write time times 50 so that it slowly animates towards the right all the time which is quite cool you can even uh, play around with this you can make random phase so that it's not uh, symmetrical which i think is quite cool and then now let's start applying the glows from the shape tunnel here so just go over here Control a select all of them and just paste them onto the cheese you just have to adjust the brightness and stuff like that a little bit so let's just do that real quick and we can add a little bit of movement here at the end towards the text so let's go over into our camera control here and let's just uh, here at the very end let's just uh, move the camera a little bit towards the text again so see now it's doing something weird here it's zooming in and out at the same time and that's because it's interpolating the space between these two keyframes and we do not want that so right click keyframe interpolation instead of auto bezier just set it to linear so now it's just gonna move slowly towards the text we're also gonna add some easing to this camera here so at the very first keyframe Control shift k to bring up keyframe velocity I'm gonna set to 0 and 75 so that we start out quite slow and then we move faster and faster and faster towards the text. Now we also wanna add some impact to this animation. So let's add a camera shake to this camera control. So slider, double click. Let's call this times, there we go. And duplicate it and call it amount. So see now if we go down into the position and alt click here, let's write a wiggle expression once again, wiggle. And we pick wave up to the first one here and then press comma and pick whip to the amount. So right before the camera ends, we're gonna click on amount here, gonna go one frame forward and set 30, and then a few frames forward and set it to zero. And we're gonna set the times to like 12, so it has a quite large impact. I press B to shorten the work area so we can see this nice bam. And now we wanna add another final uh, impact effect here. It's gonna be this nice shock wave. So let's go over to the first frame where we hit here and let's go over into masks, ellipse tool and click on the center of the screen with control alt shift. So we get this nice perfect circle and we're going to call this shock wave. There we go. Well, not shock wave, but there we go. Now let's go down here into the ellipse and let's just delete the fill because we only want the stroke here. And since we're here at the first frame, perfect. So let's go into ellipse path as the first thing and let's make a keyframe, set it to zero and move a few frames forward, something like this, and just set it to basically be all the way out of the screen. So just increase, increase, increase. And we're also gonna keyframe the stroke width. So go down here into stroke width, keyframe, set it to like 400 and go to the last keyframe and just set it to zero. So it basically go from, from very big to very small. And you can paste the effects from before as well. All these nice glows and stuff like that. So we really get that nice impact as it hits. So this is the basic animation, but I've also created a free script that creates this entire tunnel for you with a lot more settings. You can get it just by going down into the newsletter and subscribing. So let me show how this works. So let's create an entire new composition. There we go. You just make a shape here in the middle of the frame and you go down here into fill and just delete the fill. Let's just increase the stroke and just select the layer and apply the script. You just click on the script and there we go. And now you have 
the exact same setup but with a lot more options so let's go over here into the control uh, layer here so see right now let's just uh, we can uh, rotate around with the camera here so you can see what we're doing so you can already now as you already know you can change the depth you can uh, offset the position so over time it offsets to a certain position which is also quite nice you can even add some random offsets if you can see here you can add a bunch of uh, randomness to it you can even give it exponential offsets so you can make it curved so if you offset for example the position now you can see you actually make curved shapes which is quite cool you can also scale it globally so you can scale it in x or y axis however you want you can scale it in offset so over time it will scale towards whatever you tell it so it can be larger or smaller you could even give it random scale offset so once again you could just get write values and it scales randomly over time same with the rotation you can see here we can also rotate this over time quite easily and you can also give it random rotation once again in all three axes and now this is even cooler so you can even colorize it to other colors so right now if i set it to 100 it's going to colorize to whatever color i've chosen in the color control so see now if we uh, change this color control it changes to different colors and you can even hue offset it over time so if you change the hue offset here you can see it actually changes color the further it goes you can change the saturation for the entire thing just like with the others the global saturation you can change that to whatever you want so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and i'm looking forward to see what you guys can create with this and especially with the script here i'm hoping that you guys can create a bunch of different things with it and come up with your own ideas maybe you can even basically create this as a big particle system if that's what you wanted you can give it a bunch of random offsets you can see here so basically you could fly between these layers if you wanted to if you want to receive a mail whenever there are new templates, advanced templates, tools, presets, courses, etc., then I would recommend joining the newsletter. You can find the link in the description. If you like these sort of text and logo tutorials, then I can recommend the playlist showing on the left here. Have a wonderful day with some cheese.